Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stereo Launch video. And today we're talking about phase. All right, so before we get into today's video, if you find this helpful, make sure you hit the like button, leave comments, ask questions below, and of course hit that subscribe button so you can get all our videos as they come out in the near future. Talking about phase may not be the most fun topic for everybody. It's not one of those creative topics and you know how to write the killer number one hit kind of thing. But phase when recording your songs is incredibly important and can really determine how your recording sounds. Anytime you have two microphones on one source, like two microphones on a guitar cabinet or if you're going to record an acoustic guitar in stereo or if you got a whole drum kit with you know, 12, 13, 16 microphones on it. Anytime you have more than one microphone on a single source, phase comes into play. It could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, but understanding how that works will allow you to capture the sounds as you want to capture them. So let's take a real quick look at a, at kind of an extreme example. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools, and this is a um, a little track I just recorded earlier. It's just a guitar playing G chord, palm muted, power chord kind of thing. Anyway, so this is two SM57s on a guitar cabinet, and they're on the same speaker. I just kind of put them in the same place on either side of the dust cap um, and got them as close as I possibly could in phase. And so that's what this sounds like. Right, that sounds like a guitar cabinet. And that may or may not be your favorite guitar tone, but it sounds like a guitar that's been recorded. Now, as an extreme example, if we hit this button, which a lot of your plugins may have this, and some of your uh, recording interface and stuff may have this as well, is this is the polarity or the phase button. And we're gonna talk about that here in a few minutes. But let's go ahead and flip the polarity on this track and put it out of phase with this track and then this is what that sounds like. Right now it sounds completely different and that's because it's out of phase and depending on how you set up your microphones and other things there can be varying degrees of in phase and out of phase. Alright before we get all crazy and start talking about microphone placement let's talk about what phase is what's actually going on so as you can see here um, here's my track I just used the uh, signal generator in Pro Tools and made a sine wave and this is kinda what we think of when we think of a sound wave right it's got the the peaks and the valleys and it's you know this is your standard sine wave so let's go ahead and listen to what this sounds like Okay, that is a one kilohertz sine wave. Pretty boring. But it's going to serve as a really good example of what's going on when we're talking about phase. So if we take this sine wave here and we go up to one of our plugins and we hit this button, this button says phase on it. And that's kind of mislabeled. What we're actually doing is changing the polarity of this signal. So if I hit that button, if you notice, this first one comes up and then it goes down. Hit render on that. Now, the first one goes down and, the, and then the second one goes up right there. Let's hear what that sounds like. It sounds exactly the same to our ears. And that's because all we did is just flip the polarity on, on this. When we talk about phase, phase is actually the relationship between two signals. So if we take this sine wave here and we copy it and paste it to the track below, now where this goes up, this goes up, where this goes down, this goes down, these two sine waves are in phase. And when we play that, it's actually louder because this peak and this peak, this kind of volume up, um, that they're adding together and making the sound louder. So if I mute one of them, it act, you'll hear it get quieter. All right. So 
those sine waves are adding together. Now if we take this one down here and we do like what we did before, come to plug in, we hit this phase button, it's going to switch the polarity on this sine wave and we hit render and now you see where this where this peak goes up, this one's down. Where this peak goes up, this one's down. And now if we play this, it's silent. We don't hear anything because these two sine waves are exactly 180 degrees out of phase. So as high as this one goes above the line, this one goes exactly the same below it. And all throughout the entire sine wave, they completely cancel each other out. Now we come back to that original same uh, guitar amp recording we listened to just a few minutes ago and you can see that these two signals are in phase where this one goes up here, this one goes here, where it comes down, this comes back down here. And you can see it's pretty consistent throughout. Now what happens though is that this is not as nearly as pretty as that sine wave, right? It's got all these bumps up and down and so there's a difference between A Yes, the same model of a microphone, but they are physically different microphones, so they're going to respond a little differently. Plus, there's human error where, yeah, I try to get them as the same distance from the dust cap on my speaker as possible, but there's human error there. And then, you know, just all the variables of room sound and the speaker, you know, not being a perfect um, sound-making device. It's imperfect, which partly makes it sound like it does. So there's all those things that come in play, but you can see it's in phase currently. And if we listen to this again, right, it sounds like a guitar. And then if we do like what we did on that sine wave, and we come up here to our audio suite, and use this, flip, hit the phase button, render, now we can see where this one goes down, this one goes up, right? This is going up here, this is going down here. You can see this peak up here, that peak down there. So now they are basically 180 degrees out of phase. They're kind of exact opposites of each other. But because these aren't perfect sound waves like that sine wave was, you can still hear something. It doesn't completely disappear, but a lot of the frequencies are getting canceled out. So let's take a listen again. Right? You can even hear that it's quieter. So they're definitely canceling each other out. All right, so let's talk about microphone placement real quick. And we talk about microphone placement when we have two microphones on the same source, like a guitar cabinet or even overheads on a uh, drum kit. We want to make sure that the diaphragms um, of those microphones are lined up, and that's what's going to keep them in phase. So what is the diaphragm of a microphone? Well, you may have heard of a large diaphragm condenser, and that's what I have here. So the diaphragm, what they're talking about, is this large, shiny circle right here. That is basically the sound collecting part of the microphone. So when sound hits that, that vibrates, and that makes electrical signals that go out here into the microphone cable and to your preamp and so on. So that's the diaphragm of this microphone, which is easy to see. And so if I had two of these, Maybe for overheads, I'd measure from the snare and make sure this one is lined up with the other one and, and so on. Now, on this first example we've heard, um, I used two Shure SM57s, and because these are the same model of microphone, the same shape and everything, it's easy to line up their diaphragms. Now, you can't see them as well on here, and I'm going to link a video down below in the description where there's a guy who actually takes this grill off and you can see exactly where the diaphragm is on these. But essentially, if you see the Sure logo here, it's just above that, more or less. You can kind of see it if you, in good light if you tilt it, um, but it doesn't show up on camera. But again, because these are the same shape and same model of microphone, um, I can, when I put them on my guitar, guitar cabinet, obviously they're going to be on different speakers or whatever, but I'm going to just line up the fronts and therefore the diaphragms will be lined up because, well, they're the same model. But what if we have two different kinds of microphones? So in another example you're going to hear in just a little bit, 
I used the Shure SM57 and this MXL R40 ribbon microphone. And so, obviously we've already talked about this, but the ribbon microphone, you can see, you see this little line right here? That's the ribbon. And that's more or less the same as the diaphragm on the condenser microphone. This is a ribbon instead of a circle. So it's a little different, little, constructed a little different, sounds different, but the idea is the same. Sound hits this microphone from this direction, it vibrates, sends out signal and all that stuff. Now this microphone obviously goes this way, and so we would want to line up this diaphragm with the ribbon here so they would be in phase. On this instance, if you line up the front of the microphones, then yeah, they do more or less line up and they'd be mostly in phase, but you don't want to count on that. You want to make sure you always know where the diaphragm is or where the ribbon is and line those two things up. So let's look at more of an extreme example and see exactly why that is. All right, so now I have the Shure SM7B and you can see this is constructed completely differently. Um, I took the pop filter off. It actually sticks out a little bit further, but I did this so you can see the capsule right there. It actually stops right here and the diaphragm is at the end of that capsule. Now, if I were to say, well, I'm just gonna line up the fronts of these, you can see that the, this diaphragm is here, this one's way up here, they will be out of phase because they are not lined up. So you'd have to pull the 57 back to about here-ish um, to make sure that those diaphragms are lined up if your goal is to make sure they're in phase. If you want them out of phase, if it gives you the sound you want, then you know, adjust accordingly. But if you want them in phase, then you have to be somewhere in this ballpark, like this. So I have another example coming up, kind of show you why or what happens when you have something that is in phase and then you move it out of phase. And we're gonna hear what that sounds like. All right, so earlier I mentioned there's kind of varying degrees of in phase or out of phase. And so this is an example of that. What I did is I had my two microphones, they're in phase to start with. And then as the recording goes on, I slowly pull one microphone away and as I do that, you can hear the phase shift. So let's, kind of, let's go ahead and take a quick listen to what that sounds like. So you could really hear that shift, especially since there's the same model microphone on the same speaker. It's kind of an exaggerated example. What about two different microphones on two different speakers? Um, in this cabinet, they're both vintage 30 speakers, so they're not two different kinds of speakers, but they're two different speakers, and these are two different microphones. Again, we're using the Shure SM57. That's on mic two here. <laughs> And that sounds like it did before. And then I use this MXL ribbon microphone here, and it sounds a lot different. It's definitely darker and all that stuff. And so sometimes you use two different microphones to mix them together to get a different sound than what one microphone can. If you line up the two the actual diaphragms, the capsules of the um, microphones, then they will be in phase with each other. So they're in phase. Now if we use this, again we hit this polarity button here and flip the phase in the plug-in. Now if we listen to it, right, it definitely sounds different. And it sounds different in a different way than it did with the two SM57s, but it still sounds different. It's out of phase. So if we come over here, I did the exact same experiment with two different microphones on different speakers, doing the pull away thing again. And you'll notice, especially on this one, the ribbon microphone definitely gets quieter as I pull it away. I use some automation to kind of level this out because if I don't, then this just gets buried and there's can't really hear the effect so much. So. Let's listen to this example.
right? So again, you can hear that phase shift. Even though they're two different microphones and sound completely different from each other, you can still hear that phase shift. So just like you would hear you know, a kick drum mic and a snare mic and overhead mics, those would all be different microphones doing kind of different jobs and having their own sounds, but phase still comes into play. That phase relationship between those microphones can greatly affect how your recording sounds. Hopefully that all made sense. And hopefully the visuals helped you out and the examples were helpful for you. If uh, you still have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I'm not the foremost phase expert or physics expert, but I will answer what I do know. And if uh, you want me to make it a, another video in the future uh, showing more examples or explaining something more in detail, I'm happy to do that. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and of course, as always, subscribe so you can get all of our future videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.